Welcome, and thank you for joining us for worship this morning. As we share today, you are a part of the congregation of the First Baptist Church of Dover, Delaware. We may be scattered across Delaware, across the country, and even around the world, but we have this privilege of worshiping together. Please feel free to share this with friends on Facebook or forward it on email or through text message to those you'd like to invite to worship with you. Pour another cup of coffee or tea and we will share music and scripture. We will pray together and hear the message for the morning. The church building remains closed right now, but the secretary is in during the week to take your calls and to receive your tithes and offerings that you put in the mail. Remember the address is 301 Walker Road, Dover, Delaware, 19904. If you have needs, please call the church office or contact your deacon. As we begin worship, hear these words. How glorious it is to hear of the resurrection of Jesus. At his death, our hearts cried out and we felt lost. But now he comes to us and walks with us in the sharing of the word, in the music, in prayer, we know that Jesus is present with us today. Sometimes good things are right in front of us and we don't see them because our fears and prejudices blind us. So today, we open our hearts and open our eyes to see the goodness of the Lord. We want to be ready to receive God's blessings into our lives. Now let us pray. Loving God, Come and speak to our hearts today. May we, like those on the Emmaus Road, experience the way you walk with us, and may we find your words burning within our hearts and giving us hope in our daily lives. Strengthen us, give us courage, and guide our steps for the journey ahead. For we pray in Christ's name, amen. Now, join with us in singing a hymn of praise I sing the mighty power of God.
This past Wednesday was Earth Day, and significantly, it was the 50th year that this day has been emphasized. You know, much has been accomplished as so many people over the years have realized that we are all stewards of this home that we have been given. Streams and rivers have been cleaned up and air pollution has been reduced, and we stand in awe of the beauty of nature around us. We can echo the words of the psalmist in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Even though we are staying home, we can still step outside in the yard, we can enjoy the exploding flowers, the trees, the blooming shrubs. And as we pray today, we give thanks for all of creation that surrounds us and that we are privileged to protect it and care for it. Let's pray together. God of grace, God of glory, we come to you in praise and thanksgiving for all that you have created for us. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the beauty of the earth, the trees, the plants that are reminding us every day of new life. We rejoice with the birds and other animals that are nesting and we hear the beautiful singing each day. You have provided for us in such wonderful ways and you've given us the opportunity to be the good stewards of all you have created. In this time when we are secluded and making sure that we are keeping safe distances, oh God, we, we easily notice the reduction of pollution of the air and the water. Oh God, help us to not return to normal in the days ahead and to respect what you have provided. This day, oh God, we want to lift up those whose families have been affected by the coronavirus. We know of a family within our own congregation and others who are part of extended families and friends. Well, God, please give strength for each new day as they deal with fevers, with aches, and the breathing issues that accompany this virus. Please return them to full health in the coming days. God, we give thanks for those who are working long hours in hospitals and clinics and nursing centers to care for patients who are infected and are contagious. Protect them, O oh God. Give them the extra energy that's needed for each shift. The nurses, the CNAs, the doctors, the aides, the custodians, everyone who are a part of the healthcare system, each one is so important. Lord, we ask today for extra blessings for missionaries who are serving around the world as they too are in their homes and restricted from contact with those they need to serve. Fill them with your spirit as they serve you today. Oh God, those who are serving in our military are called to do and serve in ways they have never done before. We ask for their protection as they are being called to step in. It's our National Guard, our reserves, those who are on active duty. They've also seen new restrictions and new challenges in their work. Bless them in these days. God, we thank you for the leadership of our governor, John Carney, as he has worked side by side with his advisors and the medical directors as they've made necessary decisions that have not been easy. We ask that he will continue to seek wise counsel and will seek you in the days ahead as decisions are made. Bless him and bless other elected leaders in our communities and in our country in these difficult days. In our time alone in our homes, O oh God, May we look to you and may we see you with new eyes in this time. Instead of being irritated with our circumstances, help us to rejoice with newfound personal relationship that we can share with you. Forgive us when we want to look away and complain. Instead, let us lift up others. Let us pursue new ways that we can love one another in these times. Open our hearts this morning. 
that we might be burning, burning within our hearts as we hear your words for us. We pray today in the name of Jesus, who is the risen Christ. Amen.
A special thank you this morning to Leona for providing a special gift of music for us from her home. She's not going out very much at all, so Phil and the camera came to her. We're thankful for her gift for us this morning. The official day that we celebrated Easter was two weeks ago, but today we continue to share stories of that resurrection day because, you know, really we never stop celebrating Easter. You know, sometimes it's hard for one to see something when it's right in front of them. There are times when that which is the most obvious is what can't easily be comprehended. It may take a reminder, some encouragement, a suggestion, or maybe even a very familiar act for the awareness to come. I don't know whether you've thought about it, but that could be where we find ourselves as we are in a very different situation than we've ever been. You know, for our own safety, for the safety of others, we are quarantining in our own homes. We are home, and for many of us, that means alone. Alone. It's hard for us to endure cabin fever, even when we know we are saving lives, saving ours and others. The scripture I want to share this morning is a wonderful story of relationships and the good news of a life that was saved. You see, Jesus was raised from the dead. On that day of resurrection, we find Jesus taking the time to do something very ordinary. He took a walk. Share with me if you have your Bibles handy. We're looking at Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us what they had indeed seen, a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? 
That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. We ask that God would continue to bless us as we have shared these words from Luke today. You know, as we hear and visualize this story that is a favorite of many of the resurrection narratives, we realize that Luke gives us so much creativity. He's the only one of the gospel writers that includes this story in his writing. I, I think that Luke wants us, the readers who have never met or seen the historic Jesus, to find a new way to worship the risen Lord. Think about it as you remember this story. You see, Jesus encounters them in the midst of their journey. He interprets scripture for them. He gives thanks and breaks bread and they depart from there as witnesses. This is a model of worship that was familiar to ancient readers and even to us as we gather. When we gather to share the word, the meal and the sending. Except that what is unique for us is that we're not in that particular rhythm of worship this week or possibly for many more weeks. Although next Sunday we will share communion on the first Sunday of the month. As we look at the story itself, I want you to think of what has just happened. Jesus has won. He has conquered death as God has raised him from the tomb. Yet the two who are walking along the road, returning to their home in Emmaus, are lost. They're defeated. They poured their whole lives and selves into following the man they knew as the Savior. They gave up everything to follow him. Then he died. Defeat was snatched from the jaws of victory. The one who was supposed to deliver them all couldn't even deliver himself from the cross. Now others who win, oh, like Super Bowl champions, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs that won this year, are known for following up their victories with a TV commercial announcing that they are going to Disney World. An amazing victory deserves an amazing experience. The parade down Main Street in Disney World. But this is so different from what Jesus does after his victory over death. He takes a walk. Yeah, it's pretty mundane, but it's just like Jesus to return to something ordinary. He had been focused on saving life yours and mine with his victory over the grave and now he walks along the road. He is savoring life now instead of just saving life. What a much needed message we hear in just this initial action. You see, we are quarantined, we are hibernating, we are sheltering place, whatever you wanna call it in a way of saving lives. It's dull, it's depressing for some, it's, it's not easy for those who are used to being around others and who get extra energy when surrounded with other people. But you see, here's our opportunity. In the midst of all of our hand-wringing about our own situation, we need to stop and savor the time that we have as we focus on our walk with Jesus. On that day, Jesus chooses to take a slow walk with two followers and simply enjoy the conversation. Maybe Jesus is just happy to be breathing and moving about again. Message giving and miracle making aren't at the top of the agenda right now 
the sensational has given way to seeing and smelling and hearing and touching. See, doing gives way to being, and Jesus is savoring life. Deliberately choosing to savor life can be as simple as practicing holding a gaze just a moment longer at points throughout the day. Noticing one of the gifts of a slow walk is something precious we give up when we choose to live overloaded and in a hurry. I know that some of you are still taking your usual walk on the treadmill at home. You're trying to exercise, watching the pace, watching the clock to mark the time. But others are looking for opportunities to walk around the block or around the development for exercise. Yes, but for the fresh air and to see others in their yards and to wave from a safe distance and to watch others walking their dogs. Some of you have become a little more serious and maybe you've gone to Shooty Park or maybe you've gone to Brecknock and yet savoring the time spent on the walk. We need to be good stewards of this precious time that God has given us. We may never have this time again. Reverend Kirk Byron Jones, an American Baptist pastor of the Zion Baptist Church in suburban Boston, is an author and has written commentaries, and one was about this particular passage. As he shares about Jesus walking with Cleopas and his companion, he's reminded of his upbringing in that traditional African-American Baptist tradition. One of the historic and beloved features of the spiritual background is the, the talk back between the congregation and the pastor during the preaching moment. Something that we don't experience very often here in this sanctuary. He goes on to say that some of the expressions in this dialogue are more common than others. And one that is familiar is the simple phrase, take your time. Take your time. Now that phrase has multiple meanings. He said, depending on the sermon, one might want the preacher to take the time to elaborate and give more information. Maybe the preacher is talking too fast and is being urged to slow down. Maybe the preacher could have found the right words at the right time and take your time means it's hitting home and meeting a genuine need. Take your time may be a request to savor what has been given already that a second helping or the repeating of a thought or a phrase would really be appreciated. We know that Jesus, risen from the dead and returned to the confines of this life, takes his time. He saved lives and they are worth savoring each moment of every single day. I know that Cleopas and his companion wished that they had realized sooner that they were in the presence of Jesus. Their time with him was so precious and yet it was in the simple act of breaking bread that they recognized and remembered the other times that Jesus had done this. You see, once again, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to them. All along the road, their mourning of his death, their feeling of being lost and alone, could have all been set aside if they had only realized what was right in front of them the whole time. Yes, you see, Jesus was right in front of them, walking each step of the way with them. Today, and in the days ahead, it is our turn to realize that we have never been alone because right in front of us, where we least expect him, Jesus is with us. 
Yes, even in this time when we think that we are so exhausted on this journey, we need to savor our time with Jesus. We need to take our time with Jesus. Let's pray together. Bless us, O oh God, as we open our eyes to see that you are with us and that you will never, ever forsake us. Thank you for meeting us on the road, meeting us right where we are, and walking with us each day. Help us, O oh God, to savor that time with you. We pray it in your son's name. Amen. Today and in the days ahead, seek Jesus each day and savor your time with him. He has been with you and has been calling you to walk with him. Remember, you are witnesses of these things in the midst of all creation. God has created you. Jesus gave his life for you and conquered death for you. God's Spirit is with you each day, giving you strength for the journey. Share the good news of Jesus with others, with new purpose over the phone, across the yard, on your Zoom calls, and however you can witness these days. May God bless you in these days ahead as we witness together.